This here is the OCG7 Pro. It's got one of the best color pipelines you can get. It's daylight viewable, incredibly low latency, and it has camera control and touch focus. Boop. So, the G7 Pro is a more pro-oriented camera monitor capable of competing and even in some cases outperforming monitors from small HD like the MD7, but at a much lower price. Now, with a price tag of about 500 bucks, we're getting a 7-inch monitor with SDI and HDMI loop through, a 3000 nit display and a durable aluminum and polymer housing. Impressive? Well, kinda, sorta, but that's not really what makes this pro. So the G7 Pro uses 22-bit tetrahedral processing instead of the 10 to sometimes 14-bit processing we see on monitors from Atomos and Small HD. Apart from giving you more accurate colors and gradients, the 22-bit processing makes the G7 the only monitor, to my knowledge, that can actually handle full 65-point LUTs. That's kind of huge. Now, 65 point LUTs is way too heavy and taxing for a regular monitor. And if you want to get the absolute most out of your G7 Pro, the maximum amount of squeeze, you should spend at least a couple of seconds setting the G7 Pro up, letting it know what kind of camera you're working with, what kind of picture profile. I'm shooting on the Sony camera with S-Log3, and I have everything set up here, including S Gamma 3 Cine. So everything on my G7 Pro is set up based on that exact profile. By doing this, it also kind of adjusts and tweaks the response of things like exposure tools to better match the camera model or the, the picture style you're actually shooting with. Now, let's talk about brightness, which is arguably one of the most important features of any monitor. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you could do this or if you could do that if you can't see the screen once you're actually out shooting. So with the G7 Pro, we're getting 3000 nits, so daylight shooting outdoor in the open won't be a problem. There is an additional hood that can be purchased separately. Link to that one below. Stop it. Now let's take a look at the boot up time, which is about 13, 13, 14 seconds, give or take. Now the screen on this thing actually looks and it feels very nice and responsive with gesture control for brightness and volume. There's even a third gesture direction horizontally for custom features. We obviously get things like pinch zoom and things of that nature too. Now let's take a look at the total amount of latency. In total amount of latency, I mean the camera plus the monitor itself. On the G7 Pro with the Sony FX30, I'm getting a total latency of about 60 milliseconds. The touch focus and camera control works with USB-C tethering. I have kind of mixed feelings about that, but that's a topic for another story or maybe later on in this video. Now, I do want to show you this. These are the cameras and camera models currently supported when it comes to touch focus and camera control. But as always, I will leave a link down below because I'm sure OC will continue to add more camera models down the road. Now, on your monitor, click this little icon right here and it will take you to the camera control page. And the camera control works pretty much as you'd expect. We can start, stop recording. We can change our camera settings, so on and so forth. If you want to use touch focus, tap on this thing here. And now we can tap on our subject. We do get one of these little nice white boxes. And while we're at it, let's check out the rest of the menu system or the UI. So if you've ever used a monitor from Small HD, I think you're gonna feel pretty at home on the G7 Pro. We got a very similar custom page system, or I think uh, <laughs> OC actually calls it uh, my set instead of my page, which is basically eight of these customizable user menus where you can add pretty much any feature you like, and you can just add it like this, tap on it to activate and swipe up if you want to make any adjustments. Super simple and very, very easy to work with. Now we do get all of the usual tools and accoutrements like 
false colors, waveforms, focus peaking, and things like crop guides. But I won't deep dive into all those features. You probably know about them already. We can obviously rotate and flip the image as well as de-squeeze it if you're shooting anamorphic, which is probably one of the reasons why a lot of people want a big monitor like this seven inch. And we still have my old favorite, the probe location, which basically lets you decide on whether you want the, uh, the waveforms and scopes to reflect the incoming raw signal from your camera or the signal that you're actually seeing on your monitor after you've applied a conversion lock. There's a whole bunch of other things here, like settings for gamma, HDR, including HDR10, things of that nature. Custom LUTs are loaded on a little SD card here on the side, and you can store up to 32 different user LUTs on the monitor. So there's plenty of room for you to bring all the different monitors for your different cameras, or maybe some experimental ones if you wanna try things out. And there's another really interesting feature that I haven't actually seen on any other monitor brand except for OC, and that's this opacity slider we get for our LUTs. You can actually tweak or set the opacity or the amount of that creative look LUT on the monitor with this little slider. Very, very nifty, and like I said, I haven't seen this exact feature on any other monitor. Now, normally I do my exterior tour right at the beginning of the video, but today I felt, uh, I felt, I felt a little, little bit crazy. So <laughs> I've been saving it up for now. I know, <laughs> crazy, but we're gonna do it now. So, okay, so first things first, we do get that aluminum slash polymer housing and uh, structure, which actually helps keep the weight down to about 420 grams. So yay, 420 which is also about 100 to maybe 150 grams lighter than what we're seeing on the small HD ND7 and the Atomo Shinobi 7. I think that one, it's more than 500 grams. We also get two mounting points, one down here and one here at the top. Everything else except for the SD card slot and the headphone jack is located here at the back. So let's check it out. Here we get HDMI and SDI 3G in and out. I don't believe there's a cross conversion. Maybe if I have time, I'll do a quick little check here, but the manual doesn't mention anything about cross conversion. So, but yeah, maybe I'll do, uh, I'll sneak in that B roll here uh, during this section right now. USB-C port on the G7 Pro is a real multitasker. So first things first, it can obviously be used for the tethering or for the camera control and touch focus, but it can also be used for external calibration with the X-Rite probe. And you can obviously use it for powering the monitor as well. So maybe in the future, we'll see monitors with two or maybe three USB-C ports. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Now let's look at or uh, listen to fan noise. So first things first, a monitor like this with 3000 nits and that glorious 22-bit processing obviously needs some active cooling to stay reliable out on set. You can adjust the fan in the menu based on ambient temperature and what brightness you're running the monitor at. OZ even give you this little sheet sheet here in the manual for the correct settings. Now, personally, I don't care too much about fan noise. I normally use either a boom mic if I'm doing interviews or a wireless lavalier. But anyway, here's a quick little fan test for you. Let's get back to powering because there is a couple of things worth knowing here. 
I wouldn't call them quirks, but uh, there's well, they're definitely good to know about. First things first, we do get our power through here from the monitor to our camera over that USB-C connector, but that will only happen, it will only transfer power to the camera over USB-C if you're using either a regular NPF battery or the included little D-Tap to NPF adapter or dummy battery. Now, if you're using a V-mount or something and you don't care about any power transfer over USB-C, you can disconnect the D-Tap cable from the NPF adapter and just plug that straight into the little DC barrel connector right here, which do have a locking connector, which is something we don't see on these more affordable monitor options. Let's take a couple of seconds and figure out what we want to complain about when it comes to the G7 Pro. And there's only one thing that I kind of don't like about this monitor. I have three things, I, I believe, or at least two things on my list, but this is kind of my, my nemesis. So the first thing I want to bring up that I don't like, that I'm not a super huge fan of, is the USB-C tethering. As soon as you plug in that USB-C cable, you automatically lose the ability to power your camera and your monitor separately. Bug report. I discovered a bug in the new 10.1 firmware. The monitor won't let you adjust the brightness if you have it set up in a camera-specific log mode. I've reported this to OC and they're working on a fix. In the meantime, if you're on 10.1, you can switch the color setting to standard. That allows you to adjust brightness from the regulate menu, apply conversion lots, and pretty much use the monitor as normal. Another thing that would have been nice would have been uh, to get a couple of function buttons here on the top. I think that's pretty much it when it comes to the complaints department. So let's put this aside once more and talk about who this monitor might be a good fit for. The G7 Pro is for owner operators and enthusiasts who wants a bit more of everything. And that's why I kind of think of this as a poor man's small HD. We're getting very similar performance overall on a lot of these points. And yeah, sometimes slightly better if we get that 65-bit LUT support. Great color pipeline. We can hardware calibrate the monitor. I think it's a really good find for 500 bucks. So I will put some links below to all the things we've talked about in this video. And hopefully you'll click on some of those and uh, support the channel. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.